Hey there, welcome to Craft Central Designs. My name is Dwyn and I'm so pleased you stopped by my channel today. I have for you today this very cute, very colorful, very chopped full of visual interest bumblebee spring wreath. This one also serves as a welcome sign, as you can see by the gnome sign in the center. I just love this one and it was so much fun to create. Welcome back to my current subscribers and to all visiting my channel today. If you are not a current subscriber and you enjoy this video, I hope you consider becoming one so that you too may be notified when I upload a video, which I do at least twice per week. Also give this video a thumbs up if you would and leave me your comments. I love receiving them. Okay, let me show you how I created this very cute, very colorful bumblebee wreath. I purchased this gnome welcome sign, which is of a bee theme, um, on Amazon. I will put the information for that sign in the description box. Very cute for the center of that wreath. Now, I picked up these garden stakes at 50% off at Joann's, um, but they do have something similar at the Dollar Tree. So these are just going to be um, embellishments for my wreath, and I thought they were so cute. Um, so, of course, I have to uh, remove the stake off of the, the, um, the bee decor, uh, but super cute for um, an embellishment for this bee-themed wreath. I'm going to be using six-inch deco mesh in one roll of white, one roll of black, and I got that 40% off at Hobby Lobby. However, you can make this wreath from um, Dollar Tree deco mesh. They have black and white and yellow. I chose not to use that particular yellow because it was to me more of a citrusy yellow and my um, embellishments are all more of a golden yellow. So it was just a preference in uh, color and so I chose just to use black and white. I'm showing you there what I mean by that. You can see that my embellishments are more of a golden yellow as opposed to that brighter yellow. But if you're going to use this deco mesh, I would um, I suggest that you buy two rolls of each color if you really want to fill up that 14 inch wire wreath frame, which is from the Dollar Tree. I'm using just one roll each of the Hobby Lobby deco mesh. And keep in mind, every other week, their deco mesh is 40% off, and it really is a superior quality deco mesh. Very, very minimal fraying. Now, what I have here is what I actually used for my wreath. I purchased this about, I want to say, six months ago in the clearance aisle at Hobby Lobby. And what it's intended for is for photos. But... I've had this in my possession for months, as I mentioned, and I just wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And then all of a sudden it occurred to me that would be a great frame for a deco mesh wreath. So I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to include in the description box where you might be able to purchase that very same um I'm just going to call it a picture wreath, <laughs> a photo wreath. Um, it's, I'm going to put it in the description box. I found something similar, uh, or actually it's pretty identical except for color on Amazon. I'm going to put that information in uh, the description box. But honestly, you could make this wreath very beautiful just with a 14-inch wire wreath frame from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to show you how uh, to do that as well in this video. I have here some beautiful ribbons. That one is from, I believe, craftoutlet.com. The bee wreath, the, or bee ribbon that I just showed you is craft outlet. This one is craftoutlet.com. They have beautiful ribbons, very, very beautiful quality. I often buy my ribbons on craftoutlet.com. 
I have here a uh, another one that I believe was craftoutlet.com. So I have a collection of ribbons all in the B theme or their black or in this case black and white striped. Another one from craftoutlet.com. So I put together a lot of 2.5 inch wired ribbons. I'm going to be using three of those for the bow, but also I'm going to make ribbon bundles. I have here a collection of narrow black ribbons and I wasn't sure if I was going to need those for anything, uh, just so I just gathered them just in the event I would need them. That's a nice buffalo check from the Dollar Tree. Actually, it's a gingham check, not a buffalo check. It's a gingham check. Okay, so I have a collection of little florals that you could pick up as well at the Dollar Tree. These happen to be Hobby Lobby, um, which I always pick up my florals at Hobby Lobby every other week. They're 40% off. So I have some little sunflowers and some little baby um, golden yellow little baby roses. And I'm going to be just placing those around the wreath for some extra color. I have here a pile of black pipe cleaners. I always try and match my pipe cleaners to my deco mesh and as much as possible to the ribbons that I use on a wreath. I have there a ruler, a pair of scissors. I'm going to be, of course, uh, having my hot glue gun plugged in. And those are the materials for the wreath. I'm going to start by, oops, I forgot one last thing my little um, container of bees. These are little, I guess you call plastic bees. Um, and I believe I had gotten these last year on Amazon. I'm pretty sure they're still on Amazon. And they have three different sizes. And I'm gonna be placing those all around the wreath in all different places. And I'll show you that uh, in a bit. So we're going to be creating um, our bundles first be placed on that wreath frame. Now I have 16 inches marked out on my table and you can use a rotary cutter or scissors, whatever you choose. I'm going to be creating bundles in the woodland method. There's going to be one piece of white and one piece of black in each bundle, each piece 16 inches. I'm going to um, place my piece of deco mesh down on the table. I have my clips all ready to go. And I'm going to start by rolling up the end. Your factory edges are on the left and the right. I'm just going to roll up two to three times. Place a clip on there, which I got from the Dollar Tree. Roll up the other end. I place my thumbs down and just scrunch that up with my fingertips and I place the clip around that bundle. And now I'm going to do the black. Roll up the end two to three times, place the clip, turn it around, roll up the other end two to three times, place my thumbs down and let my fingertips crawl up the deco mesh to the other side, and I clip it. And then I'm gonna put those two together. I'm going to be creating uh, this wreath with 26 of those bundles. I have a half a pipe cleaner there. I'm going to wrap it right around the center, pull it nice and snug in the back, give it a couple of twists, and that is bundle number one of the 26 bundles that I'm going to be creating for this beautiful bumblebee wreath. going to show you one more time in case you're new to creating um, bundles or you're new to the woodland method. So I cut my two 16 inch pieces. One white, one black per bundle. I'm going to roll up one end two to three times, place a clip, turn it around, roll up the other side two to three times, Scrunch it up with my fingertips. 
hold it together with that clip. And now the other piece, same thing, two to three times. Add the clip, turn it around, roll it up, scrunch it up with my fingertips. And now I'm gonna put those two rolls together. Take a half a pipe cleaner, wrap it around, nice and snug in the back to hold that. And then I just proceed to continue creating my bundles, just like those two that you just saw me create. Now, if you're going to do use a deco mesh with three colors, white, black, and yellow, um, I would use the same 16 inch pieces, but I would put three pieces per bundle. That will help to fill your wreath frame. And being that that deco mesh from Dollar Tree is thinner, you, you really need to have that extra piece in each bundle. So this is if you're using the 14-inch uh, wire wreath frame. I'm just showing you, you're going to be using the second from the inside and the third from the inside uh, wire um, ring on that, um, on that wreath frame. And I'll remind you of that later. Right now, we're moving on to the um, bundles, ribbon bundles that we're going to be making. I made um, 16 ribbon bundles. And I used all of those 2.5 inch ribbons in different combinations in my ribbon bundles. I really mixed it up, placing different ones together. I cut my ribbon in eight inch pieces, fold it in half to find the center, wrap a pipe cleaner around it, a half a pipe cleaner, and then cut dovetails on the ends of each of your ribbons. Now, to cut dovetails, you just fold your ribbon in half and cut across the end of the ribbon. Now you can make them very shallow or make it a deeper cut. That's up to you. Just angle your scissors across the ribbon. And I created, as I mentioned, 16, and I created them in all different combinations. Now I decided to use um, this black burlap that I had on hand. I believe that is from Hobby Lobby and um, the part of the Robert Stanley ribbon collection. And it is a very sturdy ribbon. I love to use some sturdy pieces um, in my ribbon bundles whenever I can. And that almost always is a burlap type of a ribbon. But the reason why I like burlap is because it helps to provide um, a stability uh, to the wreath, meaning that it your, your ribbon bundles will stand up better if you have a supporting ribbon like a burlap. I hope that made sense. But um, for ribbon bundles, the more sturdy they are, the nicer they look on the wreath because they stand up. Now I just cut my ribbons in eight inch pieces. I don't, I'm not really a fan of having those ribbons uh, sticking up from the wreath and then folding over um, with a lot of tails on the wreath. I prefer mine to just kind of peek up through the deco mesh and then kind of just um, curve a little bit over the deco mesh, but not not in long ribbon pieces, if that made any sense at all. Uh, but you'll notice on my wreath, as opposed to maybe other wreaths that you see um, on Pinterest or, or wherever you, whatever source you go to, to look uh, at wreaths. But my, my ribbon bundles are, I keep them a little bit shorter. That's just my preference. You do you, however you like. Okay, it's a bow time, and you knew it was coming, right? Because this this beautiful wreath has to have a fabulous bow. 
I do have bow tutorials, but I'm going to try and take it a little bit slow. I'm going to fold over my loops and pinch it in the center. See how I'm pinching it? Using uh, fingers from both hands. Each of my loops are going to be around, I want to say, nine inches. I'm going to twist my ribbon so that when I fold over my loops, I always have the right side up. Pinch it in the center. I'm going to twist that ribbon. You want to always eyeball your loops. If you want to measure, feel free to measure. I do eyeball everything. So I'm doing my second loop on the, this that side. And it's going to be the same size. And I just eyeball my loops. I'm going to be doing a... Um, three loop bow on each side or six loops all together. Pinch it in the center. Eyeball my loops. Make sure everything's looking even. Twist my ribbon. Fold it over. Pinch it in the middle. Now I have loop number three on the left side. And now I'm getting ready to do my last loop on the right side. Twist the ribbon, fold it over, and pinch it in the center. Now this is going to be my base of my bow. So I'm not going to be doing a center loop. I'm going to just be doing the three loops on each side. I want to cut my tail off approximately the same length as the original tail that I cut. Doesn't have to be exact because you're going to trim up your tails anyway once it goes on the wreath. So there I have my base. I'm going to take a pipe cleaner, wrap it around the back. I do have a full size pipe cleaner there. And you all will notice that um, in my projects, it looks like I waste a lot of pipe cleaners, <laughs> but I really don't. I have a little um, container that I keep little pieces of pipe cleaner. It comes in very handy when I'm going to do like a small bow or whatever, but I don't worry much about, um, you know, using too large a pipe cleaner for something because I know I'll end up using the scrap pieces. Okay, for the next layer of my bumblebee bow, I'm going to actually use a bumblebee ribbon. And I believe this one, as I mentioned, was from craftoutlet.com. And I'm going to make it exactly the same way that I made the first uh, bow in the black and yellow there. Fold over my loops. Now this ribbon was more of a satiny texture, um, which isn't as sturdy as some other um, ribbons are. There's a lot of variances, just like deco mesh. There's a lot of variances in deco mesh, and the same thing holds true for ribbons. And my hope always is when I order a ribbon that's actually going to be, you know, like a real nice, sturdy um, type of a ribbon. But sometimes, you know, it doesn't turn out that way. And this was such a cute ribbon, though. It really, really went well with the theme of the wreath. So um, I ordered it and hoped for the best. And I was hoping it would be a very sturdy satin, but it wasn't necessarily. But that's okay, because I'm going to sandwich it in between um, the other bows that I make. So I'm going to let those um, more sturdy ribbons support that ribbon that's a little less sturdy right in the center. And this ribbon's super cute. There's layer number two. Now for the top one, I really wanted to have that yellow one right on top. This is a very pretty ribbon, uh, craftoutlet.com. Now I'm going to make my loops for this top uh, bow, I want to say about eight inches. And I'm going to be creating it, of course, in the same way that I created the other ones. Pinch it in the center, fold over my loops, twist the ribbon so the right side is facing up. Look at this ribbon, so beautiful and so perfect for this, for this pretty bumblebee wreath. 
So what I'm going to be doing here is just creating a two loop bow on each side or four loops all together. And there I go with the full size pipe cleaner again. You see, I do it. I do it all the time. I'm probably going to cut that off for sure, but uh, I, I buy a lot of pipe cleaners. Yeah, I do. Um, and I buy them at Hobby Lobby because I really like the quality of their pipe cleaners. Certain things make a difference. And to me, a good quality pipe cleaner is very nice to have. So for my center loop, I'm going to turn my loop under and form one single loop in the center. I'm holding that with my thumb. I'm taking that pipe cleaner from around the back, sticking it through that center loop, pulling it around the back, twisting it a couple of times. Now, if you want to see a slow, methodical, detailed tutorial on how I make bows, I have multiple tutorials. Check my playlist, get some scrap ribbon, sit down, watch the videos and practice while uh, you watch me create bows until you got it down pat and you'll be very happy when you learn how to create beautiful bows for your pieces. And I think a beautiful bow on a wreath is just imperative. I just think it makes a wreath gorgeous. I often choose my ribbons before I choose anything else that I'm going to use on a wreath because to me, it's so much about the ribbons and the bow I'm going to create. So we're going to stack our bows now, one on top of another, matching up the center, center to center. I want it nice and flush. If I need to, I trim off the pipe cleaners on the back just so I get a nice flush application, one bow on top of another. And there I have another pipe cleaner. And I'm going to uh, place that right in between the tails. You can see me separating them there. And I'm going to bring that pipe cleaner around the back. All the while I'm squishing all those bows together in the center with my thumb and my index finger. And around the back, I'm just going to twist the pipe cleaner and I'm not going to cut that off because I'm going to use the length on that remaining pipe cleaner to wrap around the wires of my wreath frame. Now I'm going to do that on my wreath frame that I ultimately use, but the same thing exactly for the wreath frame from the Dollar Tree. So pretty, but I'm not going to bother trimming up the tails until I actually have the bow on the wreath. Look how pretty that is. Just beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna prepare my gnome sign now. I have two full-size pipe cleaners, a couple of pieces of felt. Now, I had to struggle a little bit to get the uh, garden stakes off of my uh, two uh, B theme embellishments. One of them I got to come off totally. The other one I kind of had to just keep wiggling my wire cutters back and forth, back and forth to get it to snap off. So um, I just applied pipe cleaners and felt where I needed it on uh, all three of those pieces. I just use my hot glue gun. Now, if, you're, if your um, wreath is going to be outside, you may want to add a little bit of Aileen's Tacky Glue there as well. If you're concerned about um, the wreath being outside, especially if you live in a warm climate, which I do, I live in Florida. So I always think about that. If I put a wreath outside, um, I do add a little bit of Aileen's Tacky Glue. But I do use Gorilla Glue and only Gorilla Hot Glue. And once I discovered Gorilla Hot Glue, I had a lot less problem with things falling off of my wreaths. So just a word to the wise, I think that Gorilla Hot Glue is awesome. Now, on this bee, I was able, because I was able to get the garden stick off, I just poked my 
pipe cleaner right through the little um, ring that was on the back of that bee. Um, but this one, I, <laughs> I it snapped off. I was having a lot of trouble with that one. And I didn't want to risk a bending um, that piece or ruining the piece, period. So I just left it. And I decided I'm just going to put a pipe cleaner on there, put a piece of felt, and just attach it the same as I would any sign. This particular wreath is not going to be on the outside, so you're not seeing me use uh, Aileen's Tacky Glue. Aileen's Tacky Glue is my glue of choice um, for additional stability. You may have another type that you like. E6000 is another one, but that's a difficult to work with uh, sometimes, E6000, when you're doing a wreath. So uh, I find Aileen's to be a little bit, a little bit uh, more uh, compliant or, or easier to work with. Okay, so I have all three of my pieces that I'm going to be attaching to that bee themed wreath, all prepared and ready to go. And here, coincidentally, I have this fabulous box that's a bee theme. And I got this at Joanne Fabrics and I, while I was making my deco mesh bundles, I was tossing them in this box. And I just thought I would show it off a little bit. It's so pretty. But it has all bumblebees on the inside. So I have all my ribbon bundles and all my deco mesh bundles all ready to go. I used 26 uh, deco mesh bundles again and 16 ribbon bundles. Now, if you're going to use the um, wire wreath frame, I had covered this earlier, but I'll mention it again. I used the second wire from the inside and the third wire from the inside, and I just went back and forth. I used the second wire, then the third, then the second, then the third, and so on. And I just take my bundle, press it down to the wire that I'm choosing, the second or the third, I press it down very firmly, pull it against the wire, turn it over nice and snug because you don't want it moving around on your, your wire any more than need be, and twist the pipe cleaners. And that's how you adhere your bundles. The next one I would put on the third wire, then I go back to the second, and so on. Now, when I applied, I actually used that uh, photo holder for my wreath. So there was really not much difference in the way that I did it. I applied my bundles right to the wreath frame and I liked the way it turned out. Um, you could see the little scalloped edges of the wreath frame or the photo holder peeking out from the deco mesh on that bumblebee wreath. And here it is. And as you can see, very easy to attach deco mesh bundles. So I just um, applied my bundles about two inches in from the uh, center um, or the wire that uh, delineates the inside of that, that photo holder. But I don't know, I just had this idea and I just wanted to see it through and I actually love it. And from the front, uh, when you see the finished piece, you don't really see too much, the little scalloped uh, edges, I guess you could say they are. But when you walk around the wreath, you can see it. And I think it was just a really cool idea and I really liked it. I think I would do it again if I had another one, but like I said, I found this at Hobby Lobby in the clearance aisle. I think I, I think I paid five dollars for it, and the one on Amazon is considerably more. So, you may want to just forego that idea, 
but I'm just letting you know that you could find something like this on Amazon. And I'll put that information in the description box. I use the same amount of bundles on each of, uh, or I used the same amount of bundles on this one that I would have used on the 14 inch wire wreath frame from the Dollar Tree. Now I wanted just the, the little scallops, if you will, I don't know what else to call them, uh, to show just a peek out from the edge. And that was the look that I was going for. And now uh, there you can see what I'm talking about. See how that just, I love that. I think that just turned out so pretty. And it was, you know, my vision and, and it really did turn out pretty much the way I, I had envisioned it. But I filled that whole uh, frame up with those bundles. Now it looks pretty bland, but it's about to get a lot of color. So I was not able to find a golden yellow deco mesh because, uh, you know, that's not easy to find. The yellow always tends to be very yellow or more of a lemony or citrusy yellow. So I was going more for the golden yellow. So I decided, as I mentioned, just to do the black and white deco mesh and then to add a lot of color. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaners and I'm going to dig my fingers down into the deco mesh, find a wire and attach it. And that's what I have done right there. Now I'm going to take my bundles, my ribbon bundles and do the same thing. I'm going to uh, place my ribbon bundles around the wreath and try to mix up my patterns placing, uh, you know, nothing, uh, not the same pattern next to one another, but rather, you know, just kind of mix it up. So I just pull my uh, ribbon bundle through and twist it on the back side. Now you can see what I mean. I was mentioning before how I don't really like my ribbon bundles to stick up really far and bend over onto the wreath. I like them more peeking up. That's just my style. I mean, that's completely up to you. If you want your ribbon bundles longer, you could do 10 inch instead of the eight inch. But you see how my ribbon bundles are all different. So um, I just went around the wreath. And as you can see, I placed them all around the wreath. Now this wreath is starting to get some color. Now I am going to be placing that beautiful bow, which is gonna add a lot of color at around seven to eight o'clock on that wreath frame. Same thing, I'm going to take the pipe cleaners on the back, dig my fingers through, and I'm also going to do the same thing for my beehive and for that super cute tin bumblebee. I placed my uh, beehive at 11 o'clock and oh no I put my beehive at 5 o'clock and my bee at 11 o'clock. I always think of a wreath as like a clock and that's why I'm telling you I placed my bow at 7 to 8, my bumblebee around 11 and my beehive at 5. Now, whatever embellishments you use, just try and balance out your wreath as much as possible. Oh, these were so pretty on this piece. Uh, it was such a great find at Joann's. They do, you can find stuff like that as well on Amazon. Okay, here's my um, little basket of baby sunflowers and little baby roses. I'm just going to simply go around my entire wreath and place sunflowers and baby roses all over. Then I'm going to take my little bees. I have three different sizes and I place my bees in all kinds of fun places. I place some on my, actually on my little sunflowers. I placed one on the bow of my wreath. Look how cute 
they are. I placed some on the deco mesh. I just dropped my bees all over. But I just went around the wreath and I used hot glue. If you're going to have your wreath outside, just add a little dab of Aileen's tacky glue as well. So I just used the actual bloom, which is a little bit of the stem. I went around and just placed my flowers wherever I needed a pop of color. And this really helps to add a lot of, you know, pretty, those pretty yellows to this wreath and really bring a lot of color to the wreath. And you want to be careful with your bow not to cover. It looks like welcome is covered up at the angle that you're seeing the wreath. But uh, once I had it um, all completed, I pulled my bow my loops back enough so that you could actually see the welcome on the sign. And I used my hot glue as well to put my um, flowers on. And here we have it. And it is so, so pretty. There you can see the welcome. Now I'm showing you here the back of the wreath how I adhered everything on that, that frame that I put it on, which is actually intended for greeting cards or photos. Kind of a cool idea, wouldn't you say? I think it, I think it turned out really cool. So again, I'll put that in the description box if you think you might wanna try something like this with this wreath or maybe another one. You can also spray paint these um, wreath frames. You could spray paint this white or any color. It, it just has a lot of potential. I went around the back of the wreath frame, cleaned up all of my pipe cleaners, and I created a loop with a pipe cleaner for the top of the wreath to hang it by. Now that's look, doesn't it look like it's in slow motion? I have no idea how that happened, but it gives you a nice slow motion look at this beautiful wreath. I just love it. Turned out so, so pretty. I've wanted to make a bee wreath for years. Now I'm showing you how you can see the scallops from the bottom, which is really a pretty look. And I did leave tails on the uh, bow, about eight to nine inch tails, just so they'll hang down a little bit. I ripple them a little bit, kind of curl up the ends. And the little bees on my tin sign, I raised those up so that you could see them poking up from the beehive. And you can see all the pretty colors in that bow. The deco mesh, and I applied my flowers all around the outside and the entire perimeter and the top of that wreath. And so here you have it. The finished wreath. You can see the little wire frame there. And as I said, if you walk around the wreath, you can actually see those scallops as well. And this is it. Look at these bumblebees everywhere all over this wreath. I absolutely love this one, and I hope you do too. If you're not a current subscriber, I hope you will consider becoming one. See the little bee on the, on the ribbon there? 
And until next time, you all take care.